Hello, welcome back to After the Whistle. It's Tuesday, April 3rd, and I'm Kellen Voss. And I'm Arpan Lobo. For tonight's show, we're going to take a look at a busy weekend from around the world of sports as we head into the final month of the semester. Final four games took place Saturday night. In the first game, the three-seeded Michigan Wolverines came back from down double digits to beat the 11-seeded Ramblers of Loyola Chicago, 69-57. The Germans' giant Mo Wagner was a consistent source of offense for U of M all game long. He put up 24 points and 15 rebounds, joining Hakeem Olajuwon and Larry Bird as the only players to put up a 20-plus point double-double in the national semifinal. The second game of the evening was a bit of a blowout, as the Villanova Wildcats ate up the Kansas Jayhawks 95-79. The Wildcats shot the lights out, hitting a Final Four record 18 threes in the win, including 13 in the first 17 minutes of game time. Eric Pascal led the Cats with 24. Now unfortunately, we run on Tuesday, but shoot on Monday night. So we don't know what happened or what will happen in the National Championship game, sadly, but we expect it to be a great game, though. All right, we'll move to the professionals now. The Detroit Pistons were in Brooklyn on Easter to take on the Nets. Despite playoff hopes being virtually gone, Pistons were able to prove to 6-1 and one since the return of Reggie Jackson from injury with a 108-96 victory. The most notable highlight from the game was probably Andre Drummond and Quincy Acey getting ejected for a little skirmish late in the day. It's late in the season and both teams are frustrated with how things have went, so maybe this was just an attempt to let off some steam. Anyway, Kellen, it's getting late in the season, but the Pistons have won six out of seven. Uh, not really looking like we'll get into the playoffs. Uh, with some of the roster changes that have taken place this year, what, what do you think their outlook is heading to the offseason? I think the outlook uh, could be good. Um, we get a full year of Blake Griffin next year. Andre Drummond is still very much in his prime, still one of the best big men in the league. And uh, Stan Van Gundy's on the last year of his contract, so he's kind of got something to prove here in Detroit if he wants to keep his job or not next year. And uh, Hopefully we can get Reggie Jackson and Griffin, like I said earlier, um, healthy all year, and we can finally see this team's true potential and maybe even sneak in the playoffs. See, that's the thing. With, when Reggie Jackson plays a full year with Detroit, and the one time it happened, we made the playoffs. We unfortunately ran into a buzzsaw that was the Cavs that year, but we made it into the playoffs. It's the only time since 2008. Um, I do think, though, things might be a little bit difficult. They have little to no cap flexibility because of massive contracts of Drummond and Griffin. And Reggie Jackson isn't that small either. Um, they'd have no draft pick uh, as they lost it in the, Griffin, in the Griffin trade. I like what you said about Stan Van Gundy having something to prove because that will most likely be his final year in the NBA. If you think about all the things he's accomplished, he's made it to the conference finals with the Heat, made it to an NBA finals with the Magic, and he's you know, nearly brought this Pistons team back to relevancy. He will want to have an impact in his final year, and I, I definitely think that they're uh, – is some hope, but again, if Reggie Jackson or Blake Griffin can't stay healthy the, for the entire season, it might just be back to square one. Hopefully the injury bug doesn't hit the Pistons again next season. That, that'll be key. Yeah, for sure. Baseball is back. The Tigers, fresh off getting swept by the Pittsburgh Pirates at home, were host to the division basement rival, Kansas City, on Monday. Detroit was able to get its first win on the year, as a strong performance from Francisco Liriano in the team debut powered a 6-1 win. Victor Martinez drove in three. Chicago Cubs have opened their season with a 2-2 two two record, falling to the Miami Marlins by a 6-0 scoreline on Sunday. The team opened up a series against the Cincinnati Reds on Monday. Now let's go back to the Tigers for a moment. Obviously things aren't looking great for this season for Detroit, but uh, what are your expectations for the Tigers this year? Well, um, if they don't lose 100 games, it'll be an accomplishment, I think. Um, watching that opening series against... Uh, Yesterday's game on Easter, where the game one where Michael Fulmer, Fulmer started, losing one nothing, you know, you get a great starting per pitching performance, and then your bats go quiet. And then in the next game, they were able to score six runs, but they gave up eight. It seems like this team is really just going to need to trust the process. It's been back to back years that they've missed the playoffs now, or I believe three straight years actually they've missed the playoffs. And um, really, the bottom might not be here yet. As tough as this year might be. It will be the first step in getting back to a World Series. Um, at the same time, it's not going to be pretty. What do you think? Uh, I think Tigers fans need to realize that this is no longer the same team from 2010, 2011, 2012, the team that we all grew up with where you could just rely on so many bats and you could rely on Justin Verlander and 
great pitching to carry us. This is a team where um, we're still a very old veteran team, and we, there's not a ton of young talent, but the young talent we do have, we need to work on developing. Um, Nick Castellanos could, could potentially have a breakout year this year. Um, we look at um, Candelario at third base. He's looking to have a great year. Um, but just that young talent for the Tigers needs to keep moving forward and getting better at baseball in order to see this team succeed. And hopefully they can make steps this uh, season. Now I have a question for you. We say that the Tigers probably won't have a good year, but say you get to the trade deadline and Michael Fulmer is having a good year, Castellanos is having a good year, Candelario is having a good year. Who, in your opinion, do you think should be untouchable for teams if the Tigers are out of the playoff contention, which we expect they will be, but they do have some good individual players? Should they be open to any offer, or should they keep some guys on lock? Um, I think they should be open to any offer. I think they really need to consider keeping Michael Fulmer because he's shown um, he had a great rookie year last year, and he's shown that he has Cy Young potential. Mm -hmm. And so I think you need to hold on to that guy and have, let him be a piece of the rebuild. Whereas with Castellanos and Candelario, Basically, if, if you can get any young talent for those two guys, you, you just let it happen. And if they, if they break out and teams want to use their bats to succeed and make a playoff run, I say go ahead, let them have them. Just give us your best young prospects. I'm in the same boat as you. Unless we're getting a ransom, they don't really need to look to shop guys. Exactly. Anyway, we'll move on. While the men's Final Four in San Antonio may have garnered more attention, the NCAA women's Final Four is just as action-packed. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame kicked off the weekend with a stunning upset over UConn. The Irish won 91 to 89 in OT thanks to a game-winning jumper from Arike Ogunbowale. The drama wasn't over there as Ogunbowale drilled a fadeaway Ogunbowale. jumper against Mississippi State in the final to win the title. Ogunbowale even got a shout out from the Black Mamba himself, Kobe Bryant, on Twitter. And that's going to be it for us tonight. We'll be back next week with another episode. But until then, I'm still Kellen Voss, and I'm Arpon Lobo. For the rest of the crew, all game, all season, always on After the Whistle. Glad you remembered you were still yeah. Kellen Boss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>